the hazard of a dukedom. If Harry and Meghan really want to be like the rest of us they should refuse to take grand titles just for walking down the aisle, writes Janet Street Porter. She's one of the wealthiest women in the world. So what wedding present will the Queen gift her beloved grandson Harry when he marries Meghan Markle in a few days' time? Top of the list is the Dukedom of Sussex, which would mean that his bride becomes a duchess, addressed with the prefix Her Royal Highness. This is completely unpalatable to me. Bestowing a title Harry and Meghan have done nothing to deserve. No lifetime of charity work, no incredible intellectual achievement, no life-enhancing invention, smacks of snobbery, of reinforcing old values and it perpetuates a class system which rewards people with the most money, land and power at the expense of the rest of us. These meaningless titles are awarded because the person getting them has the right blood in their veins and no other distinction and a smack of privilege. Harry and his brother have grown up in turbulent times, and have been quite open about their desire to reform the monarchy, to make it more appropriate in the modern world, to slim down the number of courtiers and cut down the pomp and ceremony. They want to be more visible and accessible, but on their terms, not ours. The princes have spoken far more frankly about their struggles with depression following the death of their mother than anyone in their position has done before. Inspired by their mother, Harry and William have reached out to the homeless, the underprivileged and the disabled, in all sorts of commendable ways. They have used their high profiles to draw attention to what they see as social injustice. All this is be applauded, especially as they were reared in such a rarefied environment. Not for them state education, housework, or Saturday jobs for pocket money, starting work at the bottom of the career ladder. Harry, once the party animal regularly photographed partying in Las Vegas and falling out of nightclubs, has railed against the restrictions imposed on him by his father and palace advisors, and both brothers distrust the press, who they see as being partly responsible for their mother's tragic death. By comparison, Meghan has taken some dreary jobs as she struggled to kickstart her acting career, and is said to have a huge influence on Harry. He's better dressed, has started meditating, drinking healthy smoothies, and shunning junk food. Her background, with divorced parents and some embarrassing relatives, gives her a far wider experience of the world than her husband. Harry spent 10 years in the army, a highly regimented existence, miles away from the UK. He has never had a regular job, but promotes his charities like the Invictus Games and has just been given the courtesy job of Commonwealth Youth Ambassador by his grandmother. Over the years, Meghan will have gone to humiliating casting sessions, she will have been rejected many times, and will have developed a thick skin and ruthless ambition to land a job in a long-running soap. If she accepts the title of Duchess now, she will be letting working women down in a big way, women who have also struggled to rise up through the corporate and business world, to get recognition for their achievements through pay or powerful jobs. A few of these women get awarded honorary degrees and titles, if they are lucky enough to be spotted. I have a CBE, given to me by the Queen, and an MA in the creative arts, and I am not embarrassed about that. I worked my off in the media and broadcasting for over 40 years and helped dozens of other women along the way. On the other hand, the royal women get titles for doing absolutely nothing. Catherine, or Kate, took the title Duchess of Cambridge when she married Prince William, before which she did few jobs of any note, working for a fashion retailer. Her real job is prolonging the royal lineage, having given birth to two princes and a princess in relatively quick succession. Harry has now slipped down the succession to number six, making it highly unlikely that Meghan will ever become a princess. In the eyes of the British aristocracy, though, Meghan will never be posh. She is an outsider and will remain so, but that's no bad thing. When Camilla married Prince Charles, she became the Duchess of Cornwall and could have accepted the title of princess. Out of deference to the memory of Diana, she declined. When Charles becomes king, Camilla's official title will be Princess Consort. All these titles are no guarantee that the recipient will be accepted by the narrow-minded blue bloods of the English aristocracy and the landed gentry. The example of Sarah Ferguson should act as a warning to Meghan. Sarah became the Duchess of York on her marriage to Andrew, a title which she has held onto since their divorce, which seems ridiculous. Andrew remains next in line to the throne after Harry and then their daughters, the party princesses Eugenie and Beatrice, both of whom are said to get on well with Meghan. Sarah's antics have caused maximum embarrassment to the royals, along with her endless quest for an income. She's appeared on TV reality shows and even endorsed weight loss programs. Sarah has been invited to the wedding ceremony, but is said to be furious she has been denied an invitation to the party in the evening for just 250 guests. Being a duchess cuts no ice in that company. If Harry and Meghan want to show they're in touch with their subjects, they should decline this chance to pick up an unearned title and stick to Mr. and Mrs. Wales.